Welcome back everyone, nice to see you in my channel again. As lately I'm just sitting around in my house, I thought why not do another tutorial. So today I got a color grading tutorial for you on the Osmo Action. In this video I would like to show you how you can color grade the Osmo Action D cine like footage to make it look cinematic, fast in Premiere Pro. So let's go! Before we get into the actual color grading part, let's talk about the basics here. Color grading itself is one very important part of filmmaking and a big part that I especially enjoyed over the last years. If you are a wide beginner here, you can think of color grading like putting a filter on top of your footage, but it is basically the process of editing the different colors and lighting the picture so that it looks great in the end. And every camera kind of like produces a different picture that needs to be color graded differently. And this video here today shows you how you can color grade your Osmo Action picture profile. And first up, before we start, I need to say in order that my tips here today make sense, you need to go into your Osmo Action if you own this or GoPro, it's pretty much the same. And then you should change the picture profile. You can choose between two options here. I've talked about this before. You can say color and then there's normal, that is the standard. And then there's D-Cine like, and you should always have it on D-Cine like. That gives you more dynamic range and makes the color grading part a little bit easier. So once you have set the cine like on your camera, we can start to edit. Before we get into this now, I would like to let you know that in today's video, we are going to do the color grading part with LUTs. And so that you can do the same, I made this LUT pack for action cams and I have a test LUT pack, including three of my favorite action cam LUTs for the cine like and GoPro footage that you can now download for free if you want, it's linked below. And I'm going to use these three LUTs to color grade my footage today and you can download them and follow the steps and then you should be able to get some pretty good results fast. I already did a similar video in the past a couple of months ago on Osmo Action editing. In that video I have not really talked about color grading that much, but today we will, that's why you're here and why I'm sitting here. And for this video I use Premiere Pro because that's my go-to editing software and you might use the same. I have three clips here imported that I already selected in and out point. This clip from last year of my friend biking here. Then we have this clip from a recent skiing video with all the fuck and of white tones and then lastly we have this very beautiful golden hour clip of the summit. In the beginning you always choose one frame of the video that you then color so for this example just choose the best or the one that you think works best for color grading we're going to take this here and then this is the picture as it comes out of the camera with the cine like on. Here on the right side I have all the different color grading options here the basic correction creative and curves and other tools. Usually I always start with a LUT because that makes it easy and makes it fast to edit my footage. You can also import a LUT here in basic, but I always import it in creative so that I can change the intensity. So let's go here to look and select browse. And then you can select this pack here, the free LUTs that you can download for free below. Um, we have Dolomite, Golden Hour and Ocean. For this one, I'm going to choose Ocean. That seems like it would work here. So double click on that and right away it looks very strong. That's always with LUTs. The first thing that you do is always go to in the intensity slider and then bring it down until you like it or until you think it fits. For this one, I'm just going to go with something like 60. I think it looks good. Yeah, I really like that. And then to be honest, I already really like the shot. I think it looks super cool, but I'm still going to go into the basic correction to do some further adjustments because you always need to play around. I find this structure to be the best in the beginning. I always add the LUT and set down the intensity. And then I change the basic settings and the curves and everything else that I need to adjust. And then I can still play around with the intensity of the LUT in the end. But yeah, let's see how we do that. First thing in this clip, I'm going to bring the highlights down so that we still get some details here of the mountain or whatever this is. So let's bring this down just a little bit to see more there. And then I would like to bring the shadows up to get some details here on the darker tones or in the shadows. So let's bring that up a little bit. And I'm going to leave everything else. One thing that I would like to do, I would like to make it a little bit warmer. So let's select temperature and bring that up just by a little bit to make it a little more orange warmer and now if we click on the top here on this um, icon we can already see what we did till now it already looks pretty cool now let's go into curves one thing that a lot of people don't do in the beginning but you can really do a lot in the curves here so we have hue versus set and here you can basically choose one tone in your photo and then you can bring down or up the saturation of that tone and in this one i feel like the blues here in the background are too much saturated so let's click on this here and then we can choose this exact blue tone 
then you can see it makes these three points here and then you're going to take the middle point and bring that down until you think it is okay. I would say just a little bit down, somewhere like this. And now we don't have this blues that saturated. We also have hue versus luma that is pretty much the same. But here you can bring down the exposure of one specific tone. So let's select this blue tone again here in the background. And then we have our point again and I would like to bring it down. I would like to bring it down to get some more details here in the background again of this mountain. And I feel like something like this looks good. And if I turn here color correction on and off, I already really like how this looks like. The last thing that I can do, I sometimes do this, is vignetting. I can add a little bit of vignetting to the clip to make my subject in the middle stand out a little bit more and fade the surrounding kind of. So I'm going to bring a little bit of black vignetting into it, but why subtle? And now let's check out the before and after. You see here you have the before of the decent like footage. And here you have with all your effects added and it makes actually a lot of difference. So let's move on to the next clip, which is the skin clip. Let's choose a nice frame. We're going to start with the LUT again. So let's go to creative and let's select look, browse. For this one, I would like to choose Dolomite. And as you can see, this one looks very strong. So let's bring it down first, maybe something like 50. And as you can see, there's still some things that you can do with this clip. So let's start with basic correction. And what I see right away when I look at this clip, it looks very greenish. So I would like to change the tint a little bit more towards the magenta here. So let's just do a little bit of that, not too much. You should always keep everything very subtle. I think you can hear it with the little bit that I always say, but it is important. It is so easy to go too far with color grading and that happens a lot in the beginning. Then it is also very cold. We're going to make it a little bit warmer, something like this. In this shot, I would like to bring the highlights down and the shadows to give it a little bit more contrast here in the beginning. Then we can bring up the whites to get some exposure back or to make it brighter. And you can see it is still where I faded out. So we are going to take the blacks and bring them down until we have some darker tones also so that it is not so fade out. And that's it for the basic correction. Let's now go again to creative. In creative, you can also choose a shadow and a highlight tint. I like to do that. And here, for example, I would like to bring some warmer tones into the shadows. So let's take this um, middle point here and bring it a little bit up towards the warmer tones. It is very easy to overdo it here with this um, slider, so with whatever, <laughs> the circle. And then for this, I would like to bring the highlight tones towards this bluish here. So let's bring them down here towards the blue side. Now we made our shadows warm and our highlights a little bit colder or cooler. <laughs> If we look at the before and after, it looks already pretty good, but I would like to show you something in the curves. We can still add some contrast here with the curve so that it isn't that fade out. So let's set a point here in the highlights, a point in the shadows, and one last point in the blacks. To give our footage now contrast, we will bring down the highlights a little bit. Next up, you will bring up the shadows a little bit and lastly bring down the blacks to make it a little darker and to give it more contrast. You can play around with this as you can see gives it way more contrast if you go down here and that way it looks more faded. We're going to apply some some darker tones. Something that I still see here that we can change is um, the shadow tones or the darker tones look very greenish. To change that, go up here into the curves and select only the green channel and then set your three points again. Always set them on the crosses or whatever you call this where these lines match and then you have your blacks, your midtones and your highlights. Now by setting these keystones here we can and change the saturation of green in our highlights and in our shadows and in our blacks individually. So you just go to the blacks. And then if you bring this down, you can play around with it. You see that there are now a lot of magenta tones. That way you can change the tint in your blacks only. So we're going to bring this down because it looks too greenish on this side. Just a little bit. Don't do too much here but I think something like this is okay. And if we check out the before and after, it looks way better now, it, we gave some contrast. I would already leave this here, but here's one pro tip that you can do if you're more advanced and if you would like to get even more out of your footage, you can now go up here uh, where it says Lumetric Color and click on there and say Add Lumetric Color Effect. And then it adds another Lumetric Color and you can separately edit them. The reason why we do that, we now go in our new Lumetric Color panel and that has no changes yet. We haven't done anything to this yet, but I would like to draw a mask here, which if you don't know, a mask is just you select a part of the frame and then the effects that you apply onto the mask are only applied for that part of the frame. And in this case, I would like to bring down the exposure of 
this part here in the top so that the top of the trees doesn't look that fade out in the end. You don't need to do that but you can play around with it and it's cool to do more advanced color grading. Select this here to create a four point polygon mask. I just read how it's called. It's basically just a rectangle and it creates that for you. Adobe created now this rectangle for you that you can change the points. So thanks Adobe. <laughs> take this point to bring it all the way up there and then you take this point to bring it all the way up there somewhere after the corner so that it's outside of the frame. We would like to have our line here where the trees end and so let's select this point to bring it somewhere like this to start with and then you can choose where this line should go. I would say somewhere like this that is great. And then now we should go here to feather and change that. Otherwise the things that we are going to do on this mask now here are going to be in a hard contrast with the other side of the frame. But if you change the feather and bring it up, it fades it more into this new correction. It seems very complicated, it is not in the end, I just don't know how to explain it. I'm not very really sure how well this is going to work out now, but what you are going to do is bring down the highlights and bring down the overall exposure to make it a little darker. Because it is very overexposed that way to make it a little darker. What I think would look kind of cool is if we would make it a little warmer to fake a golden hour look in a way. So if we make this warmer now, let's see how that plays out just a little bit. You can make a fake golden hour look. It now looks a little bit like there was fog during golden hour. You often have these moments in the mountains when there is a lot of low fog and then you have golden hour and it looks super cool. If we check out the before and after now, it didn't do a whole lot, but just to show that you can do this and that you can play around with these things. Guys, I'm sorry for the interruption, but sometimes I could just smash this Sony camera. Yesterday I was already filming all the tutorial, I finished it. And then later I realized that the battery turned off and then it got dark. But yeah, that's not going to stop us. We are just going to continue where I stopped yesterday. Yesterday I showed you how I collaborate this clip and we finished it. So we have the mask on the top and then we have the overall lumetri color correction and then I have one more clip that I wanted to show you which is this one and that is the last clip for the day as always we are going to go into creative again and then we're going to say look and browse and then as you can already imagine we are going to choose golden hour here to even get I mean if the title says golden hour you probably choose it so let's double click on that it comes out very strong but I like it already I'm going to bring the intensity down as always to 50, 60, I think that is always a good mark with my LUT, so with the LUTs that I create. And so let's leave it there. As for the beginning, we are going to go to basic correction. Somehow I always start by bringing up the exposure and then I adjust highlights and shadows. So we will bring this up slightly and bring down the highlights to get some details here. With almost every action can clip, the highlights seem to be a little too overexposed. So I always bring down the highlights slightly and here we have some shadows, you can see my friend standing here would like to bring up the shadows a little bit. I'm just going to slightly also bring the whites up. And then lastly we have the blacks. I would like to show you something that you might already do or might not do. If you have ever seen this faded out look, which basically is this look that you see in cinema for example. It looks professional and you can kind of like fake this look if you bring up the blacks. So what you do, you just take the black slider and you bring it up. As you can see the subject here, my friend, because that's the darkest points. As you can see on his skis, on his pants, these are the black tones of this shot. If you bring this up, it's going to fade these black tones. And not only does that give you this faded look, but I also like it for action cam footage because I feel like it removes the noise somehow. If you check this out, you know, action cam footage like Cosmo Action often have a lot of image noise and it doesn't look very good out of the camera. And if you bring this to standard, you can see the noise on his hands here a little bit and on the ski. And if you bring this up and fade it out a little bit, that kind of like in a way removes the noise. So that's a pro tip. Other than that, I wouldn't change here anything. I would maybe bring up the intensity of the LUT a little bit because I like the LUT here. And you see the faded film here slider that basically does the thing that I showed you with the blacks. It's the same tool, but I like to do it in the blacks. I would pretty much already leave this here. I would like to show you one more thing. We are going to leave the overall correction, but I would like to show you one more mask example so that you understand what it does. So let's go again up here in Lumetri Color and say add Lumetri Color effect. And then you have your mask options here again. Now you're going to choose this first one and click on it and then it creates a ellipse as you can see. Normally I use the one I would like to highlight a person. So a person usually, you know, has like a ellipse form in a way. So drag your lips on top or drag it around the subject in this 
example my friend here and then as you can see it only now selected this my friend and the same thing here bring up the feather that is important so to fade your new color correction with the other color correction that you already have you will have to play around with this and figure out what you like but now we have um, a new color correction window open here we can now do adjustments to only this part as you can see and I would like to highlight my friend a little bit because that is the main subject in the frame. To do that we are first up going to give him some more exposure to make him stand out. One simple thing that you can always do to make something stand out is just bring the saturation up. I know it is very basic but as you can see if you bring this down it almost erases him from the shot because everything starts to become grey. If you bring it up it makes him more saturated and the viewer usually has his eyes on the most saturated things. I'm pretty sure that it's like this. So bring this up to 110 or something like that so that you give some saturation to the subject. As you can see if we click on this before and after this way sadly it did not do a whole lot but it you know it makes a difference in overall. One thing that you can also do if you highlight your subject for example you can go into creative and for especially action cam footage you can sharpen it a little bit. You see sharp if you bring this down it gets very blurry but if you bring it up your main subject gets a little bit more sharpened and that also drives focus to the main subject and yeah, that's a little pro tip. Now let's close this um, Lumetri color and the other one and as you can see we turn both off and that's our original clip. We turn the first on that's our color grading and the basic color of the image and then the second one is our subject or just the color of the subject. That's how I usually color grade my DJI Osmo action footage. Here we had three examples of different clips. It's actually not that hard of a process as you would think. You just need to try a little bit and use different LUTs and check out some different settings and I feel like if you do it over and over again you develop a sense of what looks good and what not. That was it. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Currently I'm struggling a little bit with making videos. I can't deliver any other content than stuff like this. You know the current situation it is not easy. But yesterday an exciting news arrived, an exciting package that I've been waiting for, my FPV drone arrived. And as I saw on Instagram, a lot of people are interested in this topic. A lot of people have DM'd me about which simulator I use and which drone. So I'm going to make a lot of content, I think, about FPV drones because it's super cool. I think it is a super cool filmmaking tool and there are not enough channels that really explain you how to get into FPV. It's very complicated. So I might go in that direction a little bit in the next few months. Anyway, thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this helpful. Please let me know if these tips actually helped you to improve your own color grading with the Osmo Action. You can download the LUTs for free as I said before in the description. And I will see you soon. Peace out. Tschüss.